Alright guys, so we're going to start off with a relatively basic problem. It's just a triangular mass on an inclined plane of inclined theta. And so the first thing we know is that if we have an incline of theta, then the angle between the vertical and the perpendicular is also going to be theta. The next thing that we're going to do is to assign our axes, and we really only need one, which is along our axis of motion here, and we can call it x, but it really doesn't matter. And so we draw our free body diagram, which is the first step in any dynamics problem. And because the normal force acting on the mass is by definition perpendicular to the incline, we're only concerned with the gravitational force. And so that's going to be acting straight downward, F, G. And of course, the components of this force are going to be parallel to the incline and perpendicular to the incline. And as we just said, the angle between these is also theta which means that this part right here that we're concerned with, the force that's pushing it down the incline, is going to equal Fg times sine of theta, or Mg sine theta. And so we know that the sum of forces acting along the x-axis, which is just this one force, Mg sine theta, is going to equal the mass times the acceleration along the x-axis. The masses cancel out. And we know that the acceleration along the x-axis is equal to g times sine of theta. So that's what's called the Newtonian method. And it works. The only thing is that you had to know that this theta right here is equal to this theta right here and this theta right here. There's another method that I'm going to show you called the Lagrangian method, which is harder and takes longer and uses calculus but you don't have to know stuff like that, so it's more mechanical and less actual thinking. So let's jump right into it. The first thing we do is we define our axes. We're going to have two this time. One is going to be the axis of motion, upward, and we're going to call that x. And the other is going to be directly upward, and we're going to call that y. And that matters because we're going to have to define the Lagrangian, which is the kinetic energy T minus the potential energy V, and I'm going to put a line under that, not to confuse it with velocity. And so again, that's just kinetic energy minus potential energy. So what's our kinetic energy? T. That's going to equal 1 half times m times x dot squared. And x dot is the velocity along the x direction, which is exactly how it's moving. So that's the only component of the kinetic energy. And the dot just means that it's a derivative of x with respect to time. And so that's like saying equals 1 half m times v along the x squared. And then our potential energy v is going to equal minus mgy. Why the minus? Because our g is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And so the minus cancels with that minus so that the potential energy increases as y increases. And so that's pretty much the first step done. We have the Lagrangian equals 1 half mx dot squared plus mgy. The second step now is to define our constraint. And because this is an inclined plane, that's pretty simple. y equals x times sine theta. That's why we had to make the x go upward along the plane, so that way as x increased, y increased. And so with this constraint, we're going to set it equal to 0. So y minus x sine theta equals 0. And we're going to call that f, our constraint function. And that's going to come into play in just a little bit. Okay, so I've rewritten our Lagrangian and our constraint function f here, and we're going to get to the calculus part of things, which is basically solving what's called the Euler-Lagrange equation. And that looks a little something like this. The partial derivative of L with respect to x, which means we just treat all other variables as constants, minus the full-time derivative of the partial derivative of L with respect to x dot, plus lambda times the partial derivative of f with respect to x is all equal to zero. And lambda is just an unknown constant that's going to end up representing the forces involved in this system. So once we solve this, the dl dx term completely cancels out, 
because the L isn't directly dependent on X. And so we have minus partial L partial X dot is going to be MX dot because the 2 comes down and cancels with the 1 half. And once we take the full derivative of that with respect to time, that's going to become MX double dot because it's like taking the derivative of velocity, you get acceleration. This is the second derivative of x with respect to time. And then we add lambda times the partial of f with respect to x, which is minus sine theta. And all that equals 0. And now we get to do that with y. So partial l, partial y, minus d dt, partial l, partial y dot, plus lambda, this is the same lambda, partial f, partial y, is also equal to 0. And partial l, partial y, we have something this time, that's equal to mg, minus what? Minus nothing, because l does not depend on y dot at all, so this entire thing cancels out. So this is going to be plus lambda times partial f with respect to y, and that's 1, and that equals 0. Which means that lambda equals minus mg. And so lambda from the top, which is simply equal to mx double dot divided by negative sine theta, also equals minus mg. And so we have the negatives cancel out. And our final result, quote unquote, is that x double dot is equal to mg sine theta over m, or simply g sine theta which is exactly equivalent to the result we got using the Newtonian method, except we didn't have to play around with angles, and we instead had to play around with calculus. So this will definitely come into more use once we deal with more complicated problems, but for now this is just an introduction as to how the Lagrangian method works. Also important to note is that if you have an applied force or a force like friction, the Lagrangian method gets a lot more complicated than what we just did. So that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, because it was a lot of fun to make. If you want to see me make any more videos or have any other thoughts, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and I will see you all next time.